Welcome to Christmas Mass.
Let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as the people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Not because of any righteous deeds we have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. 
When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, few people welcome Christmas with such gusto as children. For them, the days leading up to this feast of the Nativity are those of growing excitement. And Christmas Day is magical, a holiday of pure joy. Some of my friends who are parents shared stories of their young ones and this Christmas 2020. And I thought for a bit of holiday cheer, I might share some of these stories with you. Five-year-old James spent last week as an elf named Jingle Jangle, dancing around his living room and making a thorough report for Santa on his sister. Three-year-old Gracie and five-year-old Turner have spent hours searching for an explanation of how Santa gets in and out of their chimney. So far, they're considering magic shrinking powers, ladders, a pulley system that's run by the reindeer, and suction cups. <laughs> now, despite a bedtime of 7.30, eight-year-old Henry was thrilled to ask Santa for a $3,000 pair of night vision goggles, which he believes Santa will get him because of his many connections. And six-year-old Cooper says her prayer every night to a small Christmas tree in her room, placing special wishes she has for other children on a paper underneath the tree. These stories may bring back memories of your own children and how lucky you felt to make Christmas joyful and magical for them. And they may bring back memories of when you were young and the ways Christmas was made special by others. Our own memories of childhood Christmases past give us a glimpse of how to act at Christmas's present. From the Red Ryder BB gun to Bing Crosby, from Charlie Brown to Charles Dickens, our nostalgia helps us draw others nearer and nearer to Bethlehem. Ignatian contemplation encourages people to pray by entering into scripture. Using the imagination, Ignatius recommends that the faithful take an active role in the reading. In reality, we have imagined this Christmas passage from Luke for many years. In pageant, song, and scene, each of us has played wise men, shepherd, donkey, angel, or drummer boy. And today, I ask you again to follow Ignatius and enter into this gospel reading through your imagination. But in, uh, instead of imagining yourself as a person in this passage, imagine yourself as the manger. This sounds strange, I know, but humor me for a minute and imagine that you are the manger that first held the infant Jesus. Imagine what you experience as that manger. And since this imagined manger has feelings, think about what you feel in this stable in Bethlehem. Sit, excited and warm, prepared <clears throat> to welcome the Christ. Watch as the miracle of the birth happens before you. Wait eagerly as the Blessed Mother places her child in your open arms. Stand sturdily as with Joseph you support this Prince of Peace, this Wonder Counselor, this God-Hero. 
Brothers and sisters, as strange as it may sound, I think we are invited to be the manger. And not just in our imaginations, and not just at Christmas Mass, but we are invited to be the manger of Jesus every day of our lives. As we hold the gift of God's love in our open arms. As memorable as those stories of James, Gracie, Turner, Henry, and Cooper are, the way their parents held the joy and love of God through the gift of their children sticks out. Indeed, these parents are the manger, excited and warm, watchful and eager, sturdy and loving and open, and holding the mystery of the Incarnation in their hands. You know, just as sure as God came to us 2,000 years ago as a baby in Bethlehem, so too can we be sure that God continues to come to us today. And as we grow older, we better embody the manger of Christ, and we welcome and hold God's loving gift in ways both new and familiar. As we remember the people who made our childhood Christmases possible, we now experience the miracle of Christmas in and through those we hold and love. We, the seasoned mangers, have become ambassadors of love. And instead of shepherd, wise men, or drummer boy, we take part in the incarnation of Christ as parent and grandparent, as aunt and uncle, as sibling and cousin and friend. We're the manger, sturdy and eager and welcoming as we watch the magic and joy of life unfold in front of us. Sisters and brothers, this is a Christmas like no other. And while the pandemic may have compromised our proximity, let it not lessen our joy. Because just as James, Gracie, Turner, Henry, and Cooper will celebrate on Christmas, so too will every child, and so too should we. And this Christmas, as we watch the joy and love of the holiday unfold in our lives and the lives of others, let us stand with stalwart conviction as we hold them as the manger held the Christ. And as we remember those who made our Christmases possible, we thank God for our parents and grandparents, our aunts and uncles, our siblings and cousins and friends whose open arms brought us to Bethlehem. And we ask God for the grace to be a manger to others, to follow their example, and visit that elf, Jingle Jangle, and think of how Santa gets down the chimney, and write for some maybe less expensive night vision goggles, and place our prayers of hope and love for others under the Christmas tree of God's love. Merry Christmas, St. Ignatius. May your holiday be magical, and may you always be a manger. On this Christmas, let us turn our voices with believers across the whole world to profess our faith by renewing our baptismal promises. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and rose again on the third day? I do. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are blessed to profess it in Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we are invited to be majors, to be ones that hold the presence of the Prince of Peace. So let us bring our prayers to our Father. For our world on this Christmas, the people everywhere will embrace one another as sisters and brothers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For family members who celebrate safe gatherings at home during the pandemic, that our families 
live in a holy communion of love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For people in jails, hospitals, and refugee camps, for the homeless on the streets, that hope for a new creation will free those on the margins from sadness and grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from COVID-19, food insecurity, and racial violence, that people everywhere will make room in their hearts for the Prince of Peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers, especially for all our faithful departed who have begun their new life in God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intentions, which we remember in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Father, give us, give us the hearts of children that we may be open to receive you in all the ways you show up on this Christmas. Help us especially to be mangers, to bear your life for our world. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations, that to you praise may be rendered and eternal salvation be ours through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that as we recognize in Him, God made visible, we may be caught up through Him in love of things invisible. So with angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim.
Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, Alexander, our Bishop, and all who serve your holy people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to the rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Son. In his death, we find new life, for you raised him up in glory. He, the morning star of dawn, the firstborn of creation, shattering the darkness of our broken lives. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command in the form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And now let us pray for peace for our world, for our communities, for our families, and in our own hearts. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with with your spirit. Spirit. and let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you. And our prayer for spiritual communion. Jesus, may all that is in you flow into me. May your body and blood be my food and drink. May your passion and death be my strength and life. Jesus, with you by my side, enough has been given. May the shelter I seek be the shadow of your cross. Let me not run from the love you offer. 
but hold me safe from the forces of evil. On each of my dyings, shed your light and your love. Keep calling to me until that day comes when with your saints I may praise you forever. Amen. Amen. sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our hearts, and that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Just two brief announcements. The first is, this, this is the end of the year, and so you have a special chance to either give money to the government or to the church. I urge you to choose the latter. Uh, we also will have our Peace Mass on the Holy Day honoring Mary, the Mother of God, on January 1st, our Peace Mass. 
will be available through a link that we put on the website, either to St. Ignatius in San Francisco or to Billy's uh, parish back in Boston, St. Cecilia, that gave us the beautiful camera that we've been using for our masses. <clears throat> I want to thank everybody who has made our celebration today possible, the beautiful art environment that put together our crash. Uh, Mike Moore, thank you so much for your beautiful work with our photography. Uh, the Burr the family, you guys are so fantastic. And uh, especially thank you, Naomi, for coming all the way from college back home to be with us. That's great. And finally, uh, Father Billy, thank you so much for your beautiful, beautiful words and thought. Uh, we're called to be majors. And on behalf of uh, Father Dan, Billy and I, uh, our whole parish staff, uh, church and school, I wish you a very blessed and joyful Christmas. So let us now pray our final blessing. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith and hope and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who now appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your sisters and brothers. Amen. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, May you come to the one whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, a light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And please join in singing joy to the world in your worship.